Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fourth presentation of the Force Preparatory Fitness Program. Today, we're going to go through the sandbag lift and the sandbag drag strength portions of the programming, which are scheduled for Fridays if you're doing our recommended five day per week structure. If, on the other hand, you're picking and choosing your days, consider this in, as part of your programming if you want to improve on your sandbag lift or your sandbag drag. Please remember that hip flexion as well as knee and ankle mobility stability is extremely important when bending over and lifting the sandbags for the sandbag lift portion of the test. So if you're lacking in these areas, consider the programming that we have available for you in the presentation that's coming next. Additionally, shoulder stability is important when lifting the sandbag for the sandbag lift to make sure that we're in that proper position, as well as when holding the sandbags for the sandbag drags. Once again, feel free to take a look at that programming and consider incorporating most days of the week in order to see improvements and some days of the week if you want to see maintenance. Enough about that. Let's get into the nitty gritty of the actual sandbag lift and sandbag drag strength training program. Let's start with the warm up. Much like these rush strength days, the warm up has two parts here. Part A is our cardiovascular warm up, where we start with a minimum of five minutes, anywhere up to 20 minutes of light, low impact cardio. It's important to choose lower impact cardio if you're also doing the rush and the ILS cardio, which also already has a lot of running involved in it. So if you're doing too much, you're going to increase your risk of injury. If you don't have options such as a bike and elliptical or a rower, speed walking outside is a great option or our recommended three round circuit. If you haven't seen the video on how to do the three round circuit with high knees, bump kicks and jumping jacks, the link is in the description below. Once you feel warmed up, remember this is light uh, in nature, a little bit of sweat and a little bit of heavier breathing, just getting your heart rate up you're ready for the movement preparation or the muscle activation sequence, which is our warm-up part B. We go through this in three rounds. Note that there are three different levels between beginner, intermediate, and advanced. When you're doing this, it's just a warm-up. There's no shame from sticking to beginner the whole way, going through to intermediate, or sticking with advanced. How you do this is you pick a level and you go top down three times through, doing 10 squats followed by 10 shoulder retractions, 10 good mornings, 10 scapular push-ups, and finally 10 deadlifts, single leg, repeating three times. If you're struggling at one of the components or you find it too easy, then mix and match and do it zigzag style. For example, beginner squats, intermediate shoulder retractions, beginner good mornings, advanced uh, scapular push-ups, and beginner single leg deadlifts, or really anything that works for you. This is a warm up, get your muscles activated, and then you're ready for the workout. Moving on to the main set. I did forget to mention before in the previous slide that every single one of these movements, including the warm up movements and the ancillary movements, which will be in the next slide, are uh, videotaped and we show each of the progressions as well as modifications. So take a look, it will be linked in the description below. Moving on, let's get into the nitty gritty. Please note that there are three blocks, much like the rush strength days, but unlike those days, they are not separated the same way. If you recall, the rush strength days are base building for block A, strength and hypertrophy for block B, and power for block C. For the sandbag lift and sandbag drag portion of the force preparatory fitness program, we use a different approach called a specific performance movement approach. How we differentiate between the blocks is simply by increasing the total volume and the total intensity. Please remember that this program has been conceptualized to assist members in maintaining a pass, getting a pass, or returning to the force test after not having trained for a long period of time, for example, because they were on a medical category. The assumption is that we haven't been training regularly, which is defined as at least three times a week, 45 minute sessions for over the last three or six months or longer in these specific movements being holds, drags, and lifts. If your body is 
has been training regularly, but not in this specific modality, it is extremely important to start at block A. If you haven't been training regularly, it's also important to start at block A. However, if you feel that your body is ready and has been prepped to start immediately at block C, it may be appropriate. In order to better determine whether it is or not, please contact your local PSP staff and we'll be happy to help you out. Let's get into the program itself. You'll note that each block is relatively the same. The only difference is between what level one, level two, and level three constitutes. As well, the order is the same, and it's written top down as isometric bicep hold, sandbag lifts, and then the sandbag drag. But this isn't the order that we intend everyone to do it in. It may be the order that you'll want to do it in, but it really depends on what your priorities are. So we encourage you to take a look at where your weaknesses is and put that first. If you want to work on your sandbag lifts more than your sandbag drag, then make sure that you put the sandbag lifts at the top of the workout. Do five rounds of those and then do the other two portions after that. If you want to work on your sandbag drag mostly, then start with either the bicep holds or the sandbag drag. If you're not sure, then mix and match every single week which one you start with first. The idea is that you'll get more out of whichever um, series of five times through you do first because you're doing it fresh. With that in mind, we are going to talk about each of these blocks top down as it is written, but it, remember, it may not be the order that you do them in. Let's take a look at block A. So the first movement is the 30 second isometric bicep hold. So isometric meaning not moving. You'll do five rounds of those doing 30 second hold, one minute to a minute and a half rest if you need a little bit more, and then repeating five times before moving on to the next portion. We recommend starting with a 20 kilogram load, ideally with a sandbag, but any form of equipment that you have at your disposal is maybe appropriate. The first time that you do this, we really recommend that you do it with your back supported. And this is shown in the video linked in the description below. The idea here is to first practice holding the load in a proper position. So in a quarter squat, heels firmly on the floor with your back nice and neutral. There's a natural curvature of the spine, so you may have some curvature in your lower spine, but the idea here is to press your back into the wall and to engage your core with a pelvic tilt. While doing this, you're practicing holding a proper static hold, which will transfer into a good, strong position when you're doing it and actually pulling some load. Once you feel comfortable with that and you're able to do it with your core engaged the whole time, meaning that your back never leaves uh, the wall, or if your back isn't on the wall because you have excessive curvature there naturally, that it doesn't change, it stays in that position, then you can move on to level two and do it with your back unsupported. Then level three, feel free to add some weight. Now, I do wanna caution everyone that level two is very appropriate regardless of your level. I've trained people who are working for Platinum just as much as training for people who are simply looking for the pass and 20 kilograms for this 30 second isometric bicep hold is plenty. You'll really feel it in your core as well as in your arms. Once you're done with the uh, bicep holds, then we move on to the sandbag lifts if you're doing it in this order. The sandbag lifts, same thing, we do five rounds. We do uh, the prescribed amount of lifts. So in level one and level two, we'll do 10 lifts. And then at level three, we'll move it on to 15 lifts. We're starting with 25 pounds or 10 kilograms. This is just a preparatory phase to get us used to the movement. Level one, we start at a moderate pace. So we're not going balls to the wall here. We're going at a nice comfortable pace and we're practicing our technique. Make sure that we're bending down with a neutral spine making sure that our shoulders are nice and retracted and engaged, as well as our core, our glutes, and our quads. Lifting properly and reducing our risk of injury in doing so. 
Once we're comfortable there, ideally it'll take a week. Note the one week with the asterisks. That's just our recommended amount. But if you want to spend more time here, go ahead and do so. Then moving on to doing it at a fast pace. Now that you're comfortable doing the movement, let's add speed to it. And then finally, we increase the volume by five by 15. That is it for our sandbag lifts in block A. As for the sandbag drags, same thing, we do five rounds. We do a total of 20 meters and we're resting a minute to a minute and a half in between each round. The hold bag is going to be the same weight as what we were doing for our sandbag lifts. So pretty easy, use the same pieces of equipment. As for the drag, we start with 20 kilograms on the ground. It's gonna feel, it should feel relatively light. This once again is to help us train our body to get into a good position before we add in that load. So we take what we learned from the isometric bicep hold and we want to ensure that we are holding the bag nice and high and not dropping the bag down. As we drop the bag down with our arms straight, we're focusing on grip strength and pulling through our fingers, which is not a strong position. Secondly, when we lean back to, to pull or drag that bag, we want to ensure that our back remains neutral. So we're not arching at the spine. In doing so, we're disengaging our core and we're reducing the power output from our arms down to our feet, which is going to make us slower overall. And it's going to increase our risk of injury, especially into that lower back. So with that light load here on week one, we're just practicing our technique, making sure that we're doing it with good form. And we encourage you to videotape yourself. As we uh, get familiarized with that, we move on to level two. Ideally, it'll only take a week and we have 40 kilograms on the ground. And then by level three, we'll do two weeks with 60 kilograms on the ground. You may do more if you want to and then move on to block B. In order to move on to block B, we would encourage everyone to have completed at least two weeks of level three for the sandbag lifts and for the sandbag drags. We're not too concerned with what level you're at for the isometric bicep holds. You can stay at level one the entire duration, much like you can move on to level three relatively quickly. It's up to you. That's it for block A. Let's move on to block B. As I explained, the movements don't change. So I already explained the isometric bicep holds. I won't explain it again. It's the exact same as block A. As for the sandbag lifts, We'll see a change here, and the only change is the weight that we're using. So we add 10 pounds from going from 25 to 35 pounds or 10 kilograms to 15 kilograms. Since we've increased the uh, weight, we're going to decrease the total volume and also decrease the speed or the intensity. Let's familiarize ourselves with the movement pattern of this new load and go at a moderate pace for 5 by 10 lifts. Hopefully within one week, you'll be accustomed to that new load and you'll be ready to attempt it at a fast pace. Do five by 10. After each 10 lifts, you're taking a minute to a minute and a half rest. Then we move on to level three when you're comfortable. Once again, ideally it'll only take a week and you can go for two weeks at five by 15 lifts at a fast pace under this new load. Moving on to the sandbag drag, you'll notice once again, the hold bag is the same as the sandbag lift uh, weight. So we can use the same pieces of equipment and it makes it a little bit easier of a transition. The drag weight is the same as level three for block A. That's because we've increased the load in our hands. So let's get accustomed to the new load in our hands at a weight that's familiar on the floor before we move up. Hopefully that only takes a week and you're ready for level two. Level two, we increase the drag weight by 20 kilograms. And then level three, we move on to 100 kilograms. 100 kilograms on the floor is a good estimation or, um, yeah, I guess that's the best word. It's a good estimation of what the weight you can expect to be dragging when you're gonna be doing the actual test. Note that the actual test is not measured by weight, but it's measured by a friction coefficient. And that's a little bit more challenging to actually measure. So here we're prescribing weight. Depending on what your floor is or what piece of equipment you're dragging, that 100 kilograms may be more or less than what you're actually going to be dragging. So you may want to go by feel here. Try to remember how it felt dragging the weight in the actual test and try to simulate or get as close to that weight as possible. 
we think that 100 kgs will do but once again it really depends how much friction there is between what you're dragging and the surface on the floor that's it for block b so once again it doesn't matter how far you made it through the isometric bicep holds keep plucking away through those you could still be at level one just as much as you could be up at level three as for the sandbag lift and sandbag drag before moving on to block c please make sure that you've done two weeks of each of those that's it for that let's talk about block c so isometric bicep holds we're not going to talk about it again sandbag lifts we are now doing it with 45 pounds or 20 kgs that is the prescribed weight that we are using in the actual test new load means we're going to familiarize ourselves with it again five by ten lifts at a moderate pace at level one hopefully with one week at that nice comfortable pace you're ready to go you're comfortable with this weight and you're ready to move on to level two level two here now that we're doing an actual load let's try to actually mimic what we want to do in the test so 10 lifts is a third of what uh, you're actually going to be lifting in the test so let's aim for one third our goal pace let's say we've done a minute and eight for the actual sandbag lift test that's our best result yet and we want to get a minute that's reasonable it's an eight second pb and i chose a minute because it's easy math so one third of a minute is 20 seconds every single time you do your 10 lifts you should aim to hit 20 seconds no faster no slower you may be able to lift it faster on your first round because you're fresh you're doing your first 10 lifts you can probably do it in 15 seconds but then by the fifth round you may be getting tired and doing it in 25 or 28 seconds that's teaching your body to go out hard and crash and burn what we want to teach your body to do is to tr work at a good consistent effort and just keep plucking away so keep your goals reasonable the example that i provided someone has a minute and eight a minute is a reasonable goal if someone has a minute and eight 40 seconds is not a reasonable goal to train for at least not immediately we can work our way there so let's say your goal is a minute each of those five times ten your goal is to hit 20 seconds right on the dot that way when you get into the test you know exactly what you need to do in order to get a minute you just have to lift it for another 20 consecutive uh, lifts but note here you've done 50 already even though it's breaking up by a minute to a minute and a half you should be good to go especially if you do two additional weeks at level three here we're increasing the volume to 70 total lifts and we're doing 15 in a row each time instead of 10. so we're going to go at half goal pace if your goal pace is a minute we're aiming to hit the 15th at 30 seconds each and every time all five of those if you're able to do that you are probably going to succeed in doing whatever your goal is in the actual test if on the other hand you go out super hard on the first repetition and then by the fifth round uh, you're dying you're not tr training your body to um, attack this in a methodological way you're training your body to go out hard and crash and burn and your uh, chances for success aren't going to be as great and i forgot to cue the little <laughs> red line so that's all i wanted to talk about for the sandbag lifts let's move on to the sandbag drag we now have a hold bag of 20 kilograms in our hand that is the prescribed weight that we're going to be using in the actual test and once again we have 100 kilograms on the floor that is the rough estimation of what you sh will most likely be dragging in the actual test you can stay here for all four weeks that's totally okay if you recall from the uh, rush strength days this work is going to be very similar to the uh, power right so power is speed times weight and we want to train that you may be able to drag heavier but the heavier you're dragging the slower the grind is going to go so let's say you're someone who can drag 200 kilograms on the floor but you're just oh, grinding away you're training your body to grind away and then as soon as you get to the 100 kg drag which is half that load you're probably going to speed through it and you're going to risk falling you're not going to be used to going at that speed 
So let's train at that speed. Now you can you can test it a little bit, which is why for level two and level three, we encourage you to increase that weight. If you're increasing the weight, only do it slightly so that you're not um, changing the speed of your drag. Adding 10 to 20 kilograms may be appropriate. Much more may be too much. So instead of adding weight, think about just going faster each and every single one of your repeats. That's it for the main set. Let's move right along to the ancillary portion. All right, so similar to the rush uh, strength days, we have ancillary workout. If you recall, the ancillary workout is highly encouraged and highly beneficial to ensure that your stabilizing muscle groups are strong and they're gonna support you through each and every single one of the movements that you do. However, if you're running out of time or if you're pressed for time, this is the part of the workout that you can consider taking out, um, but we encourage you to do it most of the time. Take this out before you take anything else out. The warm up is extremely important. The cool down is even more important as well. We'll talk about uh, the specific movements in terms of how to do them and how to modify them. The link, there is a link in the description below where we go through this, Steph and I, on a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison. So please take a look at that. We introduce new movements here to the rush strength days. We have wood chops, which really transfer well to lifting up that sandbag uh, in the ILS. So picking it up from the floor and tossing it onto your opposite shoulder and going for your loaded shuttle. We have the glute bridge, the peel-off press, and the tabletop sandbag drag. With these movements, combined with the ones that you have for the rushes, you have a huge slew of ancillary workout movements that work on your core stability and core strength. So we encourage you to mix and match them around. You don't have to do them the prescribed way. If you like one of them more than the others, stick with it. If you're lacking in equipment to do one of the movements, move them around and make it work for you. Once again, this is the only part where uh, you can progress quicker than the intended uh, prescription. So block A is 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest. If you found that too easy, just do the 40-20 right away. You don't have to wait for block B to do that. Same thing there. If 40-20 is too easy, go to 50-10. Uh, and that's our work to rest ratio. Once again, all of these movements, we go through them in a separate video, so I won't take too much more time discussing this here. Please take a look at that video. The link is in the description below, and you'll be able to see how to do these movements and how to do this part of the workout properly. Before we finish this off, I wanna go through the dimensions of the sandbag lift component of the force test. The reason we would encourage you to actually train with the lines is that practice doesn't make perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. So yes, you can certainly eyeball it or just go on a blank wall and lift what you assume is one meter high. However, once again, you're not practicing in perfect or ideal conditions. So it's not gonna translate as much as it would if you were training very specifically and with the actual dimensions. Not to say that training with a blank wall isn't going to have its added benefits, it just won't have as much added benefits as training specifically. Additionally, if you don't have sandbags, there are modifications. If you look at the video where we go through all these movements, you'll see all of our recommended modifications. Once again, if you do a modification, you won't be able to practice the technique, which will bring you at a, a one step behind your counterparts that are practicing the technique. However, you're practicing your strength, so you're still going to have that added benefit. So it's better than nothing. All right, let's take a look at these uh, actual dimensions. There are only two dimensions that are extremely important. Everything else, just make sure they're there. The two that are important is the one meter height and the 1.25 meter width. Once you have that, uh, if you wanna go super specific, you can add the half meter up the 0.25 across and the one meter along the floor. But um, so long as you have some form of cross and lines on the floor, it's not the end of the world. In actual testing situation, when our, your force evaluators, evaluators are there evaluating you, it has to be exactly like this. But for the purpose of training, 
one meter height, 1.25 meters wide, make sure there's a cross, make sure there's lines on the floor and you're good to go. Um, yeah, that's basically it for this slide. Uh, we'll include it in the reference, uh, the reference material. So please refer to it. And if you have any other questions, please rewatch this portion of the video. With that being said, let's move right along to the cool down. The cool down, everyone's favorite part. We've seen this slide so many times. I don't want to talk too much about it. Five minutes of light cardio, five minutes of stretching. The main muscle groups that we worked on is the upper body, the biceps, the core muscles. We used a lot of them for stabilizing. Our quads and our hamstrings, depending on how you're lifting the sandbag, they both may have been used or one more than the other. So give some TLC there. And then uh, definitely your, uh, your calves as well. Once you've done your cool down, you're good to go. And hopefully you're ready for a great day and a successful force test. Stay tuned for our final presentation where we discuss flexibility, mobility, and stability. It's extremely important. With that being said, I hope you've enjoyed today's presentation and you're ready to get training.